You know what? I don't really know if I'm going to be able to do a whole season of this because I've seen so much of this as it's unfolded on the internet. So we'll see. Let's just start talking about it. And I'm like, come on, fruit cookie. I want to pull my soapbox. That's basically Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Escape Still Kicking It, and this is season one, episode one. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stomach a whole season of this. Um, Let's get, we're just going to run through it real fast, because there's really not that much to say. This is the first episode, and I really don't have that much to say. I've watched this stuff, you know, we've seen it on Instagram and Twitter, and we've basically watched it, and then we've seen footage from um, Essence Festival, and then we've seen BET. We've seen this all unfold, just like we're watching it all again, and I don't know if I'm going to be really down to do that, but anyway, let's just talk about the, the things that stuck out to me. Um, stuck out. Stuck out to me. <laughs> oh, Lord. Stuck out to me right from the door. First of all, Candy. Candy's hair in the confessional. Sharp, sharp, fucking sharp. Sharp. That, now, I'm going to say, I'm just going to go on out there. This is one of the best times I've seen Candy's head ever. Whoever did that, wherever you got it from, you need to be constantly shopping there. That did not come from Mrs. Kim's wigs, boots, and auto body shop. That is some nice damn hair and looks good on candy. The color combination, the way it's done, the cut, the curl, everything. Hair was sharp. It was like it just caught me right off guard. I said, damn, candy, sharp, really sharp. Um, Tiny's hair and a confessional. Must have been the same person that did uh, Candy's hair. Sharp. Because, you know, Tiny will have a raggedy head on you in a minute. Because halfway through the show, any, everywhere where she had them braids, that didn't work for Alicia Keys. And it's not working for you, Tiny. But in her confessional, hair sharp as shit. Sharp. Color combination, cut, all of it. Sharp. Um, why is Tasha orange? Tasha is orange. She is giving you, girl, you from the peach state at the end, but you giving me orange. I was like, girl, that's too much citrus for me up on here. She just looks orange in her confessional. The lights and stuff is just not working with her makeup at all. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Um, and I guess I got to say something about Tamika too. Uh, Tamika's ass is ridiculous. It just looks like a shelf. I, don't, I was like, I don't. I'm gay though, so I don't I don't know what the consensus is for men with these booties, but her ass just doesn't look it doesn't look natural. It doesn't doesn't look appealing to me. It's just like in certain stuff she has on, I guess it looks okay. Cause it's never really stuck out to me like this. But when they were in the rehearsal or she just had like her little uh stretch pants and her little top, her ass just looked like it disconnect, like she could take it off. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know why people are doing these butt injections. They haven't perfected it yet. They, I, I'm sure at some point they're going to get it and it'll be, it'll work like they've gotten everything else, titties and hips and all that. But these, these fake asses, I ain't with that shelf booty with the legs hanging underneath. That just, it just looks bad. But anyway, um, I thought it was hilarious because, you know, she's like the ghetto, the ghetto girl of that group. She is, she, to me, is really the the ghetto one. She, when she, she called in, well, she ain't coming to the first rehearsal because she got diarrhea. And then they got her on the speaker. To, um, what's her little name? Um, Tiny. Tiny had her on the um, speaker. She was going to say, you just ain't got no compassion for my booty hole. I'll sit up just wrong. Just, just, just ratchet. She's perfect for reality. Just as ratchet as she can be. Anyway, um, 
I'm going to say this. Candy, you're getting on my nerves. You're getting on my nerves. I understand, and because I'm a person that has a problem with forgiveness. I, I have a hard time with forgiving people. But um, you either going to do it or you're not. Like you ended up being told by Tiny later on in the show. Bitch, either you in or you out. But all this behavior, I, Candy drove me fucking nuts. She was acting just like Mama Joyce. You know, with all that shade, all them looks and care. I said, girl, I see your mammy all up in you. And then I saw Riley. I said, oh, my God. When Andrea Kelly, with her bad ass boy. Now, Andrea Kelly's ass, girl, that's, take some notes. That's what ass look like. That's the type of ass that I'm sure men are attracted to. Because Andrea Kelly, her body is bad, bad, bad. And she is a fierce ass dancer. I just and I like her. I like her her whole vibe. I always did. Even when she was in her little reality show, I liked Andrea Kelly. She was one of my favorite characters from that show. But um, yeah, she her ass was when Candy came in the kitchen. Said, "Did you have pants or for what? For what? When you built like that, like Beyonce, for what? What am I wearing pants for? Why? I'm just put these boots on and just keep it moving." Anyway, but um, when she came in there to do the choreography and all of that, I, I was like, I can't with, with you, Candy. And then she was giving me that old absent ass look. I said, that's where Riley gets that shit from. I finally seen it. She was sitting over there looking just like Riley, defeated, unbothered, uninterested, and just pitiful. I was like, girl, this ain't good TV. This is. I'm glad you don't give that when you be on the Real Housewives of Atlanta because you wouldn't have been on there. Because I'm like, Candy, really? Horrible. 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 Um, I, That was on my nerves. And then anytime she's dealing with, and it's more, anytime she's dealing with Tasha and Tamika, I see Mama Joyce. Candy do not like them. I don't give a damn what anybody says. She does not like them. And guess what? News flash. They don't like her either. They don't like her either. This is all about money. It is all about money. And I said this earlier today. I was watching um the Sister Circle earlier um this morning and um they actually talked about they had a whole little thing. They were talking about money do you go with when you're doing career moves and different things like that. Do you use passion or or money? Do you go passion over money or money over passion? This is definitely a money over passion situation. It's all about money. And Candy don't need the money. But she's money hungry. Okay? So she's going to try to stomach it because she just, Candy just likes money. You know, um, the other girls, they need the money. They need the money. The two sisters, they need the money. And, you know, Tiny, Tiny will take it. Tiny will be okay without it, but she'll take it. But Candy very much has that. And I think that the two girls, I think the sisters, they don't like Candy. And I think there's a little jealousy that goes along with that as well. You know, it is what it is. They may never admit to it. But it, there's a little jealousy thing going there of where she's at, you know, um, fame-wise, monetarily, and those things. There's some 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 jealousy there. Um, the other thing that I know, Tasha believes that the group, the group is hers. Tasha truly believes, she spoke it, that she is their Beyonce, baby. That's what she believes. I am the voice of the group. Yeah, okay, girl. You are. You are. But the only problem is the general public is fickle. So that don't work for you. The general public is fickle. That's just the way they are. Everybody knows that in Vogue is in, in Vogue was the bad one. I, I'm just going to say the baddest girl group, period. They really were vocally baddest girl group, period. And when they ended up going from four members to three members, you couldn't even tell. They still sound the same. They sound the same. Then even when they switched over and switched and had that third member that we didn't know, they still sound the same. But... They have not and will never get back to the star that they were when it was the original four girls because of the public. The public is fickle. The public's fickle. Because they damn sure didn't miss Dawn's voice when Dawn left. But 
things been going like that ever since. And then they just kind of, they're out there. Now they're just like so secondary. You know, it's like they weren't even, like they didn't even exist. But that's all about the dynamic, that visual dynamic, because the sound is still there. They do them same songs. They do some new stuff. Sound is still there, but people are used to what they're used to. They're fickle and they're very, very funny about change. I'm perfect example. I've been going back and forth with my people um, about um, my intro on my videos. And I I'm thinking we're probably going to scrap the idea because I am so afraid to change that intro you know, to change anything about that intro. One time I shortened it for a segment. I shortened it and honey, you all had a fit. Had a fit. And I'm like, you know what? I think it just goes into that thing. Child, you, you can advance yourself, but some things, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just relax and let it go. It was like one of the best songs ever. And I, I'm, you know, so... I understand, but that's just the general public. The general public, they're very fickle. They like what they like, and they like it the way they like it. And you either respect that and roll with it, or you get rolled over. That's just the way it is. So that is that. Escape, um, in my opinion, they're going to break up again. They're going to break up again. Now, we can watch this, and this be cute, and they better grab all the coins they can and put them together and put them to the side because they're going to break up again because they do not like each other. And this isn't, you know, all money's not good money. This right here ain't good money. That's my opinion. You all tell me what y'all think down there in them comments. Last thing I want to cover is Tiny versus Candy. When they went outside, they had that little conversation, had that little blow up, and Tiny and uh, Candy kind of got into it, and Tiny then got tired, and she just said, Shit, Candy, either you in or you out. What is it? You in or you out? And I was like, wow, okay. And it was so funny because like I saw Mama Joyce and Riley and Candy earlier this episode, I actually saw Tiny is her mother. She is her mother, baby. She got Candy right together. But then as soon as Candy got the crying, baby, she couldn't take it. Tiny cannot take Candy crying, and it makes sense now that they really explain. Candy's the youngest one in the group. Tiny looks at Candy like a little sister, and Tiny, she couldn't. She was real. She was giving her that tough love, you know what I mean? But she couldn't even hold up to it. Couldn't hold up to it at all. Soon as Candy got to crying and that old, you know, she get, honey, it broke Tiny right on down. I said, girl, you, she pushing you right on over. But ta Candy is ridiculous. She's ridiculous. Some things I agree with her on, but others, it's like, girl, simmer down. Simmer the fuck down. Simmer down. But I will say this. I felt like uh, concert-wise, I saw where Candy was coming from, but um, I saw where she was coming from, but I definitely... I have to agree with Tasha about the ending the song with just kicking it. I, I could see ending the show with just kicking it. And I could probably see understanding right before kicking it. Take them all the way down and then bring them all the way back up and then thank you, good night, and let them go. And now what I would have done as far as with them first come, with their set list, do a damn new song. Put a new song together that is a banger and open with that. Open with the new song. Drop that on them. This is what we're doing. Now let's hit this new stuff. This, let's hit this old stuff. Go straight from the new song right into the other stuff. So if they love the new song, they'll be like, yeah, this is the shit. Oh, my God. When is the album coming? What else do they got? And you leave that right out there. You just give them a little taste. If they don't really care for it, they ain't going to leave after the first song. You go right into the stuff that they know. So I would think that they should put together a brand new song. I mean, something really good, something really today that would really say what it is that they are part, um, capable of doing right now and making sure that people know that they're relevant and that they will stay relevant. That's what I would have done as far as the set list. We'd have created something new first and end with those two songs. Go understanding, bring them all the way down, then bring them all the way back up with just kicking it and then thank you, good night. 
That's the way I would have done it. But I agree with Tasha. What do y'all think? Anyway, I just said all I had to say. Almost 15 minutes. Now, I doubt that we'd be able to get 15 minutes out of this every week. But uh, we're going to see. All right, y'all. Later.